Hello everyone, it is Al Smith here uh, with uh, a short presentation uh, simply entitled The Seven Last Words on Being a Knights of Columbus. I'm privileged to uh, speak all across North America about uh, the writings of the Venerable Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen. And uh, as a member of the Knights of Columbus, I have been given many great privileges uh, to serve uh, my fellow man. Um, and one of those uh, things that we try to say to uh, members who join the Knights of Columbus is to use your time, talent, and treasures uh, for the kingdom of God. Uh, one of the talents and treasures that the Lord has given me uh, is, uh, I like to say, a radio voice. Um, and I remember a young, as a young man, uh, a, a person at church coming up to me and saying, uh, you have a very soothing voice. The Lord will use your voice uh, one day uh, for his kingdom. And uh, I was 14 years old at the time, and I was shaking my head, but here I am, uh, 58 years old, and uh, still on radio uh, for over 20 years now. And um, so I'm blessed. I'm a blessed man. Uh, but uh, blessed that I read a number of books by the Venerable Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen, and he taught me a great deal about our Lord's passion and the seven last words that our Lord spoke uh, from the cross on Calvary. And uh, it's these seven last words that I'd like to share with you. Uh, and I think they apply beautifully to the Knights of Columbus um, because as a man journeys and uh, serves his fellow man in the community, uh, I think he can relate a great deal to these words that our Lord spoke. Uh, now I'll preface this by a beautiful comment that Archbishop Sheen made that he said, uh, there's no better preacher in the world, uh, in the history of mankind, than the dying Christ. And there's no better homily or sermon than the seven last words. And uh, boy, those are words of truth. Uh, these uh, great words that our Lord spoke. I mean, he, of course, famous sermon, the Sermon on the Mount of Beatitudes, uh, we recall those words so many times. But sometimes these words, the seven last words, we don't think of enough. Uh, sometimes they're uh, pigeonholed into uh, the Lenten reflections. Uh, but uh, they are actually words that are meditated on uh, throughout the year. Every time we go to Holy Mass, Calvary is reenacted. And so, uh, again, we have this opportunity to, to ponder those great words. And so I think they can apply so beautifully to all of us. And so uh, when I think of the first word that our Lord spoke from the cross, and they were those words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Um, there's a lot to be uh, taken from those words and to apply them as a member of the Knights of Columbus. Um, forgiveness. Uh, it's difficult. I um, I, I, I think we live in a world that we love to judge others. We love to, uh, you know, point fingers. Um, what is that saying? Every time you point a finger, three point back at you. And, uh, but our Lord is, uh, again, not only making reparation uh, for the many sins um, of the world, uh, he is uh, giving us that godly advice to forgive those who offend us. Uh, I like to think of uh, sometimes uh, questions that God might ask me. Um, have you ever offended me, Al Smith? And I think if he asked you the same question, uh, if you have ever offended God, uh, I'm sorry we'd have to answer in the affirmative. Uh, so again, he's teaching us how to be merciful, to uh, keep that to mind, to forgive others, and uh, know that God is the judge, not us. God is the judge, not us. And so in our work with our fellow uh, brother knights, uh, and sometimes there's tensions, uh, let us always ponder those beautiful words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Uh, he forgives us because sometimes we're ignorant. We don't know what we're doing. Uh, if we knew what we're doing, <laughs> maybe we wouldn't do it. But uh, again, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, I always like to um, talk about, uh, and, and Sheen, spoke of the university of unlearning. And um, if only I could unlearn a lot of this stuff that I picked up in this journey. 
And uh, the University of Unlearning is the confessional. And uh, the beautiful um, uh, moment when the priest raises his hand and absolves us of our sins, um, Fulton Sheen would talk about, you can almost imagine the uh, blood of our Lord that came from the cross dripping uh, upon us to absolve us of our sins. Uh, he shed his blood for us to take away our sins. And uh, that great freedom that comes from confession. And it's easier for God to write on blank parchments, you know, clean uh, slates, than it is on something full of scribbles. And so, again, the university of unlearning, uh, something to take on that. All right. Uh, the second words our Lord spoke from the cross are, are simply uh, these beautiful words he said to the good thief, this day you'll be with me in paradise. Now, I think there's a lot to be learned from the dynamic of the two thieves. Um, there was a lot of action going on, um, you know, leading up to uh, the crucifixion and, of course, when they're on the cross. And we know the story of the bad thief in that how he addressed the Lord and said, um, if you be the Christ, uh, use your power and get us down, okay? And I think a lot of times we can relate to that because we're saying, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be racked with pain. I don't want to be crucified. Uh, get us down. Uh, don't you hear them all saying to you, if you be the Christ, come down? And um, again, it's, uh, I think a lot of us can relate to that. And yet uh, the good thief had heard the Lord forgive his enemies and uh, looked upon the Lord and this great grace came upon him. And, um, you know, he actually then rebuked his fellow thief and said, do you not fear God? Um, we deserve what we're getting. Uh, he's innocent. He's innocent. And, uh, of course, uh, you know, we knew what fo followed. Uh, those beautiful words where he said, Lord, remember me, remember me. Uh, and he said, this day you'll be with me in paradise. Um, boy, there's a lot to take there uh, for all of us. Um, you know, both thieves were asking for something. One was asking to be taken down and the other one was asking to be taken up. We have to make the same choice as a good thief to say to the Lord, take me up. I'll stay with you. And sometimes we have to stay, stay to the very end. And that's part of this journey. Uh, we all want to abandon the mission, uh, but the good thief trusted. He trusted in the Lord to say, I will stay and I will trust in you. And I think as a member of the Knights of Columbus, uh, when things are tough, we can learn a great deal from the good thief. We can, we can. All right. We continue these beautiful uh, seven last words that, uh, Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen brought to our attention. And uh, again, I think they apply beautifully to uh, the life of a, a member of the Knights of Columbus. Uh, and so the third word that our Lord spoke from the cross is simply, woman, behold your son. And to the disciple he loved, behold your mother. And uh, what a great gift that was when our Lord gave to the world his mother. Um, and, uh, you know, theologically, I think, I think sometimes we miss the mark, but, uh, this is what it was all about. Uh, I like to say Calvary was the nursery. Uh, it's when we became children of Mary and children of God, she became our mother. And, uh, again, the scriptures talk about our Lord being her firstborn. Uh, but we, uh, through the, uh, I want to say this spiritual adoption, uh, become her millionth and millionth born. And uh, I tell you, what a great gift to have her as our mother. And as a member of the Knights of Columbus, one of the greatest gifts that uh, a member receives is the gift of the Holy Rosary. Um, every um, member who joins is given a rosary and uh, given uh, um, you know, a charge uh, to carry the rosary and pray the rosary. And uh, I tell you, the more you pray the rosary, the more you get to know Christ because you meditate on his life, death, and resurrection. Uh, this is a beautiful instrument, a beautiful um, way of uh, drawing closer to Christ is through the rosary. So uh, when our Lord said from the cross, woman, behold your son, 
and to the apostle he loved, behold your mother. Uh, boy, there is something. We need Mary. Uh, our Lord uh, showed great prudence in giving us Mary. Uh, he knew uh, if we wanted to become holy, if we wanted to learn how to be Christ-like, uh, go to her. Go to her. Uh, one of the titles of the Blessed Virgin Mary is Refuge of Sinners. Uh, we are all sinners, and we need to go to Mama. Uh, I like to call her Mama because there's this tenderness, this uh, devotion to her, uh, but we need to include her in our lives. And uh, as I said, uh, there's no better way to become more Christ-like than to ask the person who formed Christ to help form you. So, all right. Uh, the fourth word our Lord spoke from the cross, I think all of us can relate to, uh, those are those words, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Uh, I think every person can relate to those words, especially members of the Knights of Columbus. Uh, <laughs> uh, because we have these moments where, um, you know, the, the work is great and the members are few. Uh, there's lots to do. And uh, sometimes we think of these projects we uh, embark on and oh, we say if there was just a little bit more help. And sometimes we always think, oh my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I'm doing this with three other men and we could really use 30, uh, but we will get by. And uh, the Lord never abandons us. I mean, he's always with us. Uh, but sometimes we have to feel that sense of abandonment. Uh, but sadly, I don't think we think enough about how it was our sin that caused our Lord this moment of despair. Uh, the world had turned their back on him. Uh, only a few days earlier, we were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. Um, and then a few, so we, of course, it, our words turned to crucify him, crucify him. Uh, so, I mean, sin is an abandonment, a turning away from God. So when we sin, we turn away from God. And of course, he's calling us to turn back to him, um, turn back to him. And, uh, but again, I think we can identify with those words, uh, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Um, you know, many scripture scholars talk about that's the beginning of uh, the 22nd Psalm. It begins with despair, but ends with victory. And uh, again, we have to trust in that expectant hope that there will be victory. Uh, yes, there will be those times of darkness and despair, uh, but know that, uh, again, victory is nearby. It's nearby. Our Lord has won the victory, victory with the cross. And um, again, we just have to uh, claim that, claim that. Uh, we continue uh, with this uh, beautiful sermon, uh, the sermon from Mount Calvary uh, by our Lord, uh, when he says those words, I thirst. And um, when I hear those words, I can't help but think of Mother Teresa and how she developed a beautiful apostolic work um, just serving the poor. Um, and people would ask her to say, Mother Teresa, how do you do this? Um, you know, you just go into the streets of Calcutta and you uh, pick up uh, the poor and the dying and you love them. And she would just say, I see the suffering Christ in them. I see the Lord saying, I thirst. And it just inspired her to, to serve the Lord. Um, a lot of times we want the warm, fuzzy church. We want the easy stuff. Uh, but yet our Lord did suffer, and we need to minister to him. And so when he's thirsting, uh, he's thirsting not only to be served in the poor, he's also thirsting for a relationship. And uh, the beautiful thing about the Knights of Columbus is it's an organization that challenges the men to learn their faith, uh, to grow in their faith, to attend Holy Mass, to uh, spend some time in prayer. There's some beautiful uh, prayer books they developed and uh, programs. So again, it's this idea of the Lord is waiting for us to come to him. He's thirsting for us. Uh, Archbishop Sheen wrote so many times, he says, the Lord is more interested in saving us uh, than we are interested in being saved. Uh, the Lord is always waiting. He's always thirsting for us. And of course, we can help uh, uh, satiate his thirst by ministering to the poor and the marginalized around us. So uh, what a great way to respond through our work as member of the Knights of Columbus. You know, I think of the sixth word from the cross, uh, it is finished. And uh, again, a very um, 
great uh, motivational speech, I'd like to say, the Lord uh, in saying this to us. He was leading by example. Uh, he was saying, I've come into the world to die. That's my mission. Uh, all of you have come into the world to live. But my sole mission was to come from the Father, come into the world, become human, take on human flesh, to teach, to preach, to heal, but to save. My mission was to save. And uh, he's saying to the, to the Father in heaven, it is finished. And so he's inspiring each and every one of us to keep doing our work, uh, to doing the work that God has called us to do. And uh, so when I feel like quitting, when I feel like not participating, I think of those words, it is finished. Our Lord is saying, keep serving uh, however you can. Uh, he stayed to the very end until uh, his work was finished, and he inspires us to keep doing that too. And so uh, to every member who is feeling like, uh, I want to take a break, I want to give up on this, Again, just look to the cross and see our Lord, and he gives you those words, those, that great little motivational push uh, to uh, keep completing the work. Uh, we need to keep uh, working to save our souls, uh, to help <laughs> so many. Uh, again, the work isn't done. Keep working. All right. Uh, and the final and last word our Lord spoke from the cross is, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Uh, beautiful words of our Lord. He'd given up everything. Uh, given away his clothing, of course, to the, uh, the executioners, stripped of everything. Um, he gave away his mother and his best friend to each other. And, uh, but he saved the very best to last, and that was his holy will. And so uh, this is one thing that we need to learn. I think a lot of times we're very possessive. Oh, this is my time, my money. Uh, I've worked hard for this. And we want to hold on to it. But isn't it God's? He gave us all this talent. He gave us all these gifts. And it was all created by him. So uh, to learn how to give him our all, our time, our talent, our treasures, uh, the Lord leads a lot by example when he says, Father, into your hands, I give you my spirit, my will. And uh, again, that's something we all need to do is to continue to give God our holy will and to unite our will with his. And great things will happen. So anyway thought I would just give you just that little um, uh, teaching on the seven last words and you can apply it to anything. Uh, I know Archbishop Sheen wrote many books and applied it to many themes. Uh, Calvary in the Mass, uh, Victory Over Vice, um, The Seven Words of Jesus and Mary. There's so many beautiful books that he wrote and so you can apply it in your own life and apply it as a member of the Knights of Columbus. And so I'll leave that with you. Uh, remember, pray your rosary, read your Bible, and continue to become the man that God has called you to be. And uh, through the intercession of the Venerable Michael J. McGivney and the intercession of the Venerable Fulton J. Sheen, may God continue to bless us and keep us. We'll see you again next time. God love you.